The Pentagon wants to directly plug into commercial satellites to integrate it with its own orbital networks. This would enable all armed forces to access data at a faster pace from soldiers in the field to intelligence agents around the world. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. Two major developments to watch for are, one, the growing relationship between commercial use and military use of outer space, and two, the Pentagon's growing technological capabilities in outer space. Historically, the U.S. military has always been tied to the commercial industry by a thousand threads, but now it's happening with space technology. As the wars in the Middle East die down, which were aimed more towards non-state actors, the Pentagon has been shifting gears towards state actors again, like Russia and China. But the difference today is what exists in the hands of the wealthier nations, the advanced technologies capable of using outer space to their advantage, making space a new interconflict domain. When it comes to outer space, satellites are the name of the game. Satellites have the ability to transfer data and information at alarming rates. It isn't only just satellites. It matters what the satellite was originally intended for. Outer space holds satellites from the military, from commercial industries, satellites from various nations, and even independent satellites. Just this alone highlights how technology has advanced in the past 70 years. But the problem, in the eyes of the Pentagon, is that these satellites aren't connected and working together to benefit U.S.-based multinational corporations. What if you can connect as many of these satellites together, centralize the data flow, and use it to a military advantage against an enemy nation? That's what the Pentagon is doing right now. The Government Accountability Office has said connecting commercial satellites into the military's network is also a cost-saving effort. They say, the DOD estimates that it has achieved cost savings of several hundred million dollars from using commercial hosted payloads to date and expects to realize additional savings and deliver faster capabilities on orbit from planned missions. Cost savings can result from sharing development, launch, and ground system costs with the commercial host company. Recently, the Space Development Agency, or SDA, teamed up with a private satellite commercial company, Capella Space. The SDA was established in 2019 and is a directorate of the DOD's Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, which supports space development in the interests of U.S. national security. The SDA's mission is to rapidly develop and deploy a militarized space architecture to counter, contest, and deny other nations' space capabilities. They recently teamed up with Capella Space in order to link its satellites directly to the Pentagon's transport layer. A transport layer is a mesh network made up of satellites on orbit connected by optical inter-satellite links which make it possible to get data from anywhere in the world to a soldier, a weapon system, or intelligence agency faster than ever. Capella Space's chief technology officer, Christian Lenz, says, Our team at Capella Space is thrilled to become the first commercial company to demonstrate compatibility with the SDA's national defense space architecture and standards. Enabling our satellites to integrate with the new SDA architecture efficiently is a critical step for us to work seamlessly with the U.S. defense and intelligence sector. We are proud to be able to work with the SDA in demonstrating this cutting-edge technology. Uh, for those of us who are on the call, if you haven't seen, there was a fascinating piece of Defense One that came out yesterday about how a U.S. war game was conducted and for lack of a better phrase, uh, we lost quite badly. Uh, there's been a lot of debate about that, uh, whether it's a good thing, whether it's a bad thing. And so putting that to the side, I think it's important to start thinking about the strategic competition with Russia and China 
at a bigger and much more significant level. At the same time, I think it was yesterday as well, another article came out about how commercial imagery was used to unpack the development of China's new missile fields uh, with, the, with the wonderfully named bouncy castles of death um, shrouding the construction there. And so I think in the two of those conversations and two of those articles, we see exactly what we're trying to talk about. Looking over the horizon to strategic competition with Russia and China and the integration of commercial technologies into the national security space architecture. Capella Space is known for producing images of Earth from outer space using SAR satellites. SAR stands for Synthetic Aperture Radar. Capella's SAR imaging satellites produce extremely high resolution images from space, regardless of weather or time of day. And they want to give access to this technology to the Pentagon. There is another proposal on the table with similar aims. DARPA's Project Blackjack, a separate but related planned demonstration to connect a constellation of orbital mesh network satellites to the Pentagon to widen its capabilities in space. Project Blackjack involves Lockheed Martin, who is overseeing the first phase of satellite integration for DARPA. It involves integrating only 20 satellites. This is just a test phase, which, if successful, these lessons will allow the integration of hundreds of satellites in the near future. This assimilation of satellites will provide the Pentagon to transfer data anywhere in the world without any human input. So for those folks who are, you know, following Blackjack or who are new to it, you know, we're attempting to uh, find a way for the DoD to proliferate uh, space services uh, using LEO. Um, you know, normally when we build spacecraft, we build in the DoD very expensive spacecraft. Um, and that limits how many we can uh, build. So Blackjack is an attempt to figure out what we can do from a DoD perspective uh, with lower cost spacecraft. Um, you know, historically lower cost meant lower performance, um, but you know, thanks to commercial advancements, both in, you know, namely like the cell phone and, and microelectronics industry, as well as commercial space, some of those trends, you know, you know, there's an opportunity to explore those trends and whether that lower cost actually means lower performance, uh, whether that paradigm still holds. So that's fundamentally the program in a nutshell. Um, you know, we've been spending the last two years uh, sort of in our phase one exploratory, you know, because this is sort of, you know, a new price point and a new acquisition methodology for us. There was a lot of exploration. Colonel Brian DeNaro, Executive Program Officer for Space Development says, this innovative hybrid architecture will demonstrate accelerated data transfer timelines. Accessing commercial ISR data and reducing data transfer timelines are critical components in addressing the evolving threats to our space systems and our national security. Usually the private sector produces technologies and sells them to the Pentagon. But this dual-use approach allows for the private sector to continue to have access to these technologies, where both the private and public sectors work in tandem together, building even closer ties. And as we stated in our last video on the origins of the state surveillance industry, these technologies lay in the hands of the wealthiest anti-democratic factions who hold the most power. This technology always, sooner or later, is used on the working classes around the world. The global network has always had the goal to expose this system of power, to educate and unite the people, and to change these technologies for the greater good. Join the global network to keep space for peace.